Emu shows their full strength, and Elder Saturn is gone. A new elder steps in and Dragon comes back into the story. There's a lot of action in this chapter, so don't miss it. If you like One Piece videos, hit the like button. Subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss any future reviews and updates. Alright, in chapter 1125, one of the Gorose dies. Yeah, it's crazy, but someone else is taking their place and it's Fee Garland Garling. I know, it's exciting, let's dive into it. Saturn is with the Vice Admirals, who apologize for what happened and suggest following the Straw Hats to Elbeth, but Saturn says no. They got what they wanted, though Vega Punk's broadcast was the big failure. At Egghead, Punk records, which contains Vega Punk's brain, starts rising into the sky because the cloud machine has been activated. York tries to stop it, but she's too late. This is really interesting. Vega Punk has been working on an artificial cloud system called a cloud plant. He also created an air conditioning system that controls Egghead's climate and adjusts the density of pyrobloin, which we've heard of before. Pyrobloin is a key material used to make sea stone. These clouds are similar to the ones on Sai Island and are meant to protect against a possible great flood that could happen. It's Vegapunk's failsafe to lift punk records into the sky, keeping it out of reach. We found out that Shocker, Edison, Pythagoras, and Atlas are still alive. Inside the Egg Dome, there's a long corridor with spare parts for the Vegapunk clones, like heads, arms, and other body parts. The Vegapunks created a new body by combining parts, Edison's head, Shaka's body and legs, Atlas's left arm, and Pythagoras's right arm. All four are sharing the same brain now, but we don't hear from Stella in this chapter, likely to preserve the impact of the original Vegapunk's death and what Kizaru went through afterward. It seems we might not hear from Stella anymore, only the others. They're discussing York and punk records. Pythagoras mentions that brainwaves can connect to punk records from anywhere in the world, meaning York can access its information. Edison responds, saying it's better than leaving it in her hands and that they will protect it until humanity learns how to use it properly. We cut to the authority room where the elders are and Figarland enters. He's now appointed as the new elder, warrior god of science and defense, replacing Saturn. Black flames come from Saturn's body as he begs for mercy from Emu. Suddenly, Saturn's body starts aging rapidly and then explodes, leaving only his skeleton. It seems Saturn got what he deserved. We've also learned more about Emu's powers, confirming the theory that the elder's abilities come from Emu. Their powers, which weren't introduced as devil fruits, are likely given by Emu, and it's clear that Emu controls their immortality and can take it away at any time. I initially wondered why Emu focused on Saturn instead of the other elders, since they didn't complete the mission either. But this chapter explains it well. Saturn led the mission, went in person, and was the reason Emif could interfere and unleash Joy Boy's hockey, which clearly scared Emu. With Garling taking over, we know he'll also become immortal. We've also learned that Emu chooses already strong people and grants them the power of an elder, instead of creating the elders from scratch like some theories suggested. This chapter revealed a lot about the elders and Emu's powers, which keeps the story interesting. Figarland Garling, who is strong and connected to Shanks, now has immortality. While Luffy had no trouble beating Saturn, it's doubtful he could defeat Garling as easily. As promised, we move to the dragon part. We jump to Kamabaka Queendom. Koala is summarizing Vegapunk's speech for everyone. Betty says, so our world is sinking into the ocean. Sabo adds that it makes sense since the celestial dragons live on top of the red line, the highest point in the world, a good observation from him. Dragon is standing on the beach, talking to himself. He says, Vegapunk, there's no guarantee that people who believe in your last words will only prepare for peace. We need to act fast, or soon people will start fighting each other for a safe place to live, 
Dragon is smart to recognize that it could be difficult to organize people if they start panicking and fighting over land and resources. Dragon is making it clear that he needs to act fast, and hopefully, this time he really will. We're still waiting for that big dragon moment, and it seems like Oda is hinting that we won't have to wait much longer. Let me know your thoughts on this crazy chapter in the comments. Thanks for watching, have a great day, and I'll see you in the next one.